University of Michigan, you should be ashamed of yourself. And no, I'm not talking about the Connor Stallions thing. I'm talking about this study, which led to these headlines all across the news this week, which claims that urban gardening and therefore backyard gardening is producing five to six times more carbon footprint than traditional agriculture. And no, not overall globally, but a per capita or per vegetable or fruit basis. And this is just crazy to me. And that's why it's made so many headlines is because people hear this, that, you know, someone making a garden in their backyard is producing more carbon emissions and more negative impact to the environment than large scale ag. And the reason why this is so insane is because it is insane. This is a textbook definition of a university study that is trying every way that it can to manipulate the data to try to make a point. Because if these university studies don't get the results that they want, then they don't get the headlines and they don't get the funding that they want. And I would gladly debate these scientists and students and postdoctorates that came up with this idea that the home gardener or urban gardener produces a larger carbon footprint than large scale ag. So in order to get the data point that they wanted and the headlines that they wanted, what they did is they made three separate categories of urban gardening. So the first one is the typical backyard gardener. So someone that has maybe a few raised beds, containers, or a little veggie plot in the backyard. The next category are community gardens. So places like, you know, a community garden or a church that opens up an area where they have multiple plots that you can then rent out by the season. And the third one are the urban farms. And this is the one that actually probably does have a large carbon footprint because oftentimes these are vertical farms or converted warehouses or containers. And they have a lot of energy draw because they're using grow lights and things like that, or just overall, just all of the infrastructure that goes into these urban farms compared to you know a field farm that's outdoors. Obviously, obviously, your grandma growing some tomatoes in her backyard has nowhere near the amount of carbon footprint as large scale greenhouses that are intensively growing tomatoes using grow lights and fancy technology and lots and lots of ag workers. But that's common sense. And unfortunately, common sense doesn't make for good news headlines. So what they did is they took all three of those separate categories and they lumped their data together. And because the carbon footprint of those urban farms was so high, whenever they added it together with the backyard gardeners, which is really low, then they got this data point, which made all the headlines. Now, I don't think the entire study was meant to try and discourage backyard gardeners, but the headline certainly could be taken that way if people just take it at face value and say, wow, it's more efficient to buy my produce from a large farm rather than growing it myself or having a small local community garden provide that for us. And there were a few good nuggets in the article, such as reminding people that if you are going to use infrastructure such as raised beds, greenhouses, garden sheds, grow lights, etc., if you can use those for as long as possible without constantly replacing the materials in them, then that's going to lower your carbon footprint. But this type of sensationalism that comes from, in my opinion, a flawed study like this, is just something that I don't like to see in the news because I would never want to discourage people from trying to do more small scale urban gardening than what's currently happening right now. So yeah, if you are a responsible backyard gardener or urban gardener, no, you are not negatively impacting the climate in any way whatsoever. You are doing a whole lot of good. So don't always listen to the headlines.